Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of the News Feed. I'm Katie Lukens. And I'm Haven Lewis. With the recent crime alerts for sexual assault and sexual battery involving Virginia Tech students, many Hokies are looking for ways to help sexual assault survivors or prevent future sexual assaults on college campuses. One group that is actively working to provide sexual assault prevention education is SAVES. This year, SAVES has been ramping up its visibility by putting up flyers and setting up tables around campus in hopes of becoming a larger and more effective organization. Newsweek reporter Carson Bartlett has more on the story. SAVES, which stands for Sexual Assault and Violence Education by Students, is a student-led program operating through the Women's Center at Virginia Tech. SAVES works to prevent sexual assault and gender-based violence through peer education workshops and participating in awareness campaigns like Take Back the Night, the Red Flag Campaign, and the Clothesline Project. We learn about everything from like what sexual violence really looks like, what are the statistics, what, what does consent mean, what are the definitions here on campus, what are the legal definitions, um, what does relationship violence look like, that this is broader than just sexual assault, it's all kinds of um, intimate partner, sexual and relationship violence. So. As the group becomes larger and more visible on campus, the members hope to make changes in the near future that would help them better impact the Virginia Tech community. So, for example, when I joined, there was maybe 10 members. Over the semesters, it's weighing down a lot, and right now we have four peer educators and our advisor, and we just got 15 applications, which is a very big deal. So our goal right now is to grow as an organization so that we can push and make a bigger impact in the community. Applications for SAVES are open every spring semester to students. Those interested in scheduling a presentation or workshop with SAVES educators should contact SAVES advisor Katie May. Reporting for the Newsfeed, this has been Carson Bartlett. With the school year winding down, many students begin to feel the pressure of finishing the year on a high note. Many students can do just that, but for some, they must deal with much more than simply studying for tests. Newsfeed reporter Connor Doherty has more. As school draws to a close, many students are getting ready for finals and the fun of summer break. However, the stress that comes with finals can cause major problems for some, especially those dealing with depression or another mental illness. Current research estimates that one in four college students suffer from some type of mental illness, including depression. Unfortunately, as many as 75% of students don't seek help for their mental health issues, which is why suicide is the third leading cause of death among college students. The Out of the Darkness Campus Walk hopes to reduce these figures by raising awareness about depression and suicide, while changing the stigmas that surround these issues. I feel one of the stigmas that I'm trying to change is that uh, suicide is cowardly. Um, I don't feel like it's cowardly at all. I think so, in some instances it's just kind of people are forced into it. It's kind of their only choice left. Um, and I think this walk is trying to bring awareness that it's definitely not cowardly at all. Out of the Darkness walks are held all over the country, but only just recently came to Virginia Tech. Founder Ashley Hayes lost a close friend to suicide in high school, and now she hopes to help students realize that they aren't alone. Um, well, I had a personal experience in high school. Uh, I lost a friend to suicide and um, really didn't know how to deal with that on my own. Um, I didn't realize there was quite so many resources out there. Um, and then I figured this out uh, a little bit later in college and uh, realized that was really important. Um, and since I had not known those resources were there, I figured other students wouldn't. And so we kind of, me and a group of friends, decided to start that at Virginia Tech. With the help of people like Ashley, our community can be a place where everyone can get the help that they need. For those students looking for help, they can schedule an appointment with the Cook Counseling Center online at ucc.vt.edu or by phone at 540-231-6557. Reporting for the Newsfeed, I'm Connor Doherty. Each year, as you may have noticed, the Virginia Tech Corps of Cadets has its fair share of balls and formal events that recognizes the culmination of hard work and dedication in the cadet regiment. While military balls have been a premier event, the civilian track cadets decided to do something new this year. Newsweek reporter David Jones has more. The Corps Cadets' civilian track program is highly regarded for its reputation of producing highly capable leaders for the civilian sector. The VPI Battalion held its first annual gala this past weekend at Sinclair Farms in recognition of its achievements. 
This event was not only a testament to the battalion's dedication towards success in the program, but for each senior cadet's hard work and determination leading up to graduation this spring. Um, for me, it is the journey, not the destination, necessarily. For the cadets, it's the destination. Maybe, I don't know. But um, for me, I get, I get great satisfaction every single day watching as I interact with 200, 250 BPI cadets. Months of preparation went into making sure this event went without any drawbacks. The people who made it happen did so out of their love for VPI Battalion and its collective group of hardworking personnel. Most of the committee were out here this morning at like 11 a.m. Um, working for a few hours to get things set up, so that was really important um, and it kind of set the tone for the evening, just having everything all set up when we all got here. The gala, with its grand atmosphere, went down not only as a memorable achievement for the civilian track program, but for the Corps as a whole. Reporting from Cinquin Farms, this is David Jones with the News Feed. Just ahead on the News Feed, the Communication Department at Virginia Tech recently announced a new sports media focus, available to those graduating in 2019. New courses were available in spring 2017, with more to be added in the fall. And bacteria that can freeze water was found in Claytor Lake, and research is being done to see what effect this bacteria has on the surrounding area. That story and more after this break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back to the news feed. Now that spring is in the air, Claytor Lake will be a popular location for many activities, such as swimming, hiking, and fishing. However, it now is also the setting of a scientific breakthrough. Newsfeed reporter Johnny Kraft joins us with more. Thanks, Haven and Katie. Virginia Tech researchers found a special bacteria, Pseudonomus syringae, at Claytor Lake that can freeze water. The research team went to investigate Claytor Lake after noticing a large amount of the bacteria in rain samples around Blacksburg. Virginia Tech researchers were surprised that every sample collected from the lake during the year contained strains of the bacteria. According to research associate Regina Hanlon, the bacteria contains evolved proteins that allow it to freeze in temperatures as warm as negative 4 degrees Celsius compared with the negative 38 degrees Celsius at which pure water freezes. Syringi is able to make a protein that organizes water to freeze at a warmer temperature than would happen without the bacteria being present with that protein, and we call those ice positive. Pseudomonas is not dangerous to humans, but is a plant pathogen with some strains that can cause disease on hosts such as tomatoes, beans, and wheat. The abundance of this bacteria in Claytor Lake indicates that the use of creek, lake, and pond water for irrigation purposes can increase the risk of crop disease outbreaks. The research team is currently investigating whether the strains can cause that cause plant disease are found in Claytor Lake as well as missing the pseudonym as using the pseudonomus to make predictions to treat fields at the right time to enhance crop yields. Reporting for the news feed, I'm Johnny Kraft. Back to you at the news desk. The women's basketball team has recently finished up their season after a historic start of 16-0 under the entire new coaching staff. Even though they had a successful season, they don't plan on taking much rest. The beginning of April marks the first time back in the gym as a team for the Lady Hokies. They started the season 16-0, which hasn't been done since 2005, and received a WNIT bid for the postseason. However, the Hokies postseason came to a halt after a loss on the road to the Michigan Wolverines. But that only drives the team for future success. Losing three senior starters who averaged half the Hokies points, the team is happy but looking forward to improve after such a great building year. The coaches and all the players are 
just use it want to use last year as like a like a basis like a building stone and just keep building off of that and getting better and faster and stronger and more skilled so I think it was kind of like it was a good start and we're just ready to build on on top of that and go even farther into the postseason. College basketball cross the nation is year round which means the athletes don't get days off. The Hokies firmly believe in no days off and they are hungry for success. They plan to build off the hype from this past season and hope to eventually make the NCAA tournament as the men did this past season. Rock the Blocks is Blacksburg's annual music festival that is soon approaching this April. What some may not know about the event is that local businesses on the Main Street Strip have more to gain than you may think. Here is Newsfeed reporter Dylan Holliday with more on the story. Every year, sometime in April, the Rock the Blocks Music Festival comes to the downtown streets of Blacksburg, Virginia for a weekend of music and fun. Bars, galleries, and restaurants are transformed at night into music venues for local bands and artists to take to the stages. While the whole event is under the Rock the Blocks banner, it's the businesses that are in charge of the weekend festival. The community of businesses around Blacksburg get to come together as co-organizers of the event. A lot of the events that we have here that kind of generate a lot of business, whether it's graduation or you know, Valentine's Day or anything like that, it's, we're very reactive to it. The town gets to determine, you know, the pace of it, how busy we are, you know, Virginia Tech football games, you know, how well the, town, the team does impacts you know, how well we, we do here as a business. But this is very much in our control in terms of, you know, which bands we're getting, you know. Um, and we very much establish relationships with all the bands that we have here. Um, we've hosted them, many of them, several times. So it's very much, you know, we, we're, we know them by first name basis. We know what to expect. They know what to expect from us, um, which again, kind of, not to hammer home a point too much, but it very much encourages that small town feel, which I like a lot. So. And what's your but it isn't just the businesses that feel like Rock the Blocks is an important event. Students and residents appreciate the effect it has on everyone involved. Uh, so it's important because the music culture is just so big, and with rap being incorporated and Bob Marley's culture and just the country culture and everything about it, it's just it's a big culture, and the traditions that come through it are amazing. So with artists being able to spread their name any way that they possibly can, I think it's great that Blacksburg is opening up for them and allowing them to come spread their name and their work. This year, Rock the Blocks takes place on April 14th and 15th and includes venues like 622 North, Serratano's, Champs, Shisha, XYZ Gallery, and Blacksburg Farmer's Market. I'm Dylan Holliday, reporting for the Newsfeed. Virginia Tech is constantly planning new events for students to attend and participate in. With so many different events, conflicts are bound to arise. Let's see what happens when two big shows are scheduled for the same night. Newsfeed reporter Courtney Snookus tells us more. Fashion merchandising and design students have been planning the Virginia Tech Fashion Show since the beginning of the school year and decided to schedule the event for April 13th. On March 24th, they were disappointed to hear that Big Sean would be coming to Virginia Tech and performing on the same night as their show. Some are worried that Big Sean will take away from the attendance of the fashion show, but others are hopeful that students will make the decision to go to both events. There's no way to know exactly how much the concert will affect the attendance of the fashion show. With all of the time and effort put into the event, Planners, designers, and models all have their fingers crossed that a good crowd will still show up. If you're interested in attending the fashion show, you can purchase tickets online for $5 or at the door for $7. I'm Courtney Snookus, reporting for the Newsfeed. That will wrap up this edition of the Newsfeed. If you have a story idea for the Newsfeed, let us know. Send us an email at the newsfeednrv at gmail.com. And as always, you can also connect with the news feed on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Katie Lukens. And I'm Haven Lewis.